Greetings and welcome to our holiday special edition of Dawn of an Era of Wellbeing, the podcast. Today's program will include messages from our hosts, Irvin Laszlo and Fred Sau, me, your moderator, Alison Goldwyn, and several of our upcoming guests, including Michael Tobias, Michael Beckwith, Jude Curran, Kingsley Dennis, Gary Jacobs, and Marianne Williamson. These greetings are intended to provide us with a sense of hope during a very challenging moment on this planet. And during this season of giving, our guests will offer each of us some thoughts on how we can give something back to the world to perhaps make it a better place in the coming year. First word from our moderator, Allison Goldwyn. Tis the season to be feeling sad, lonely, uplifted, angry, mystified, frustrated, misty-eyed, grateful, longing, fearful, bored, tearful, depressed, vulnerable, enriched, and maybe even blessed. And in those swirls of 3D emotions, any and all of which makes sense, it's also important to cultivate a relationship beyond our five senses to gain a more loving sense of self, one that can help us learn the dance steps of this very tricky worldwide tango so we step less on each other's toes. We've heard it before, we're spiritual beings living in a material form, but that trips us up repeatedly. It leaves us with a void constantly because we've been living only part of the story, the 3D part that makes us feel apart from rather than a part of. And we're much more. How do we know that? Well, look at love. Can't touch it, can't see it, but is there any denying it's real? We're gonna need to expand and deepen our senses to transition dense times on Earth where what we see and hear isn't always clear and often evokes fear. As long as we're exclusively relying on a North Star somewhere out there, we're going to remain lost in here. Love is the universal language and music is a portal. Did you know that the deepest note ever registered in the universe emanates from the Perseus Cluster, 250 million light years away in the key of minus 57B. That's 57 octaves below middle C. Wow. Well, presumably, it also dwells in the hearts of humanity, born of conscious stardust and cosmic debris. So, if it feels like the world is breaking apart, if you feel your heart is breaking in large or small part, let it open you just a little for a tender-hearted something to breathe through you. Who knows? Maybe we need to go out of our minds to get into our hearts to hear our special note that makes us feel a part of the cosmic whole. Hear your music. Let music heal your spirit. Listen to music that stirs your soul this holiday and let that be a gateway for powerful rhythms of harmony to start playing. What's your vibe? R&B, jazz, hard rock, rap, classical, new age, world music, hey, chants, whatever, whatever it is that rocks your world and moves your soul, let's spread some of that virally this holiday and way beyond. Greetings and love. And now a word from Kingsley Dennis. For all the listeners out there, wherever you are, in which part of the world you are, whatever your, your background, your cultural background. I wish to uh, send a message of uh, great peace to you and to let you know that all of us, we are a, never apart from each other, but a part of each other. And I think that's a, a, a great distinction to understand. And that we are unified as a family, and so when we come to celebrate these times, the end of the year, however you celebrate, remember that it's a gathering between human beings. And I wish that you would remember that we don't need to always change the world because everything we do as a person has meaning. 
And if we can have meaning for ourselves, that will ripple out into the world. Because we start from ourselves. We start from a place of wholeness. Everyone is unique. Everyone is important. Everyone can make a difference from being who you are and being right where you are. You don't need to be anywhere else from where you are right now. And in that, I thank you and I give you my blessing. Michael Beckwith. Peace and blessings, everyone. I am Michael B. Beckwith, the founder of the Alpha International Spiritual Center. And during this particular season of the holidays, we want to make sure that they're, they're holy days. We want to keep our attention on the underlying reason for these particular days and begin to tap into within ourselves the awareness of a, of a peace. Peace is not just the ac- absence of conflict. Peace is the dynamic of harmonizing good. We want to tap into the, the love ethic. We want to tap into the ethic of forgiveness. We want to tap into the ethic of generosity. And so as we're going through these particular days, let us anchor these qualities on earth through our thought, our word, and our deed so that during this time of gift giving, we're actually becoming aware that we are the gift that the presence, by whatever name we choose to call the presence, has given itself as individualized expressions of itself called us. So we go out wherever we are and we give the gift of our, of our authenticity, our love, our patience, our kindness. And as we do that, then this holiday will be a holy day. We'll build on it and year after year after year it becomes stronger and stronger. I wish you all a happy holiday Make it holy by tapping into your real authenticity. Peace and blessings. Michael Tobias. Uh, okay, so the, the holiday season, as humans speak of it, is um, definitely a time to take note of the fact that it's not a holiday for everyone, and uh, it's not a holiday for, for most wildlife. It's not a holiday for children who are hungry or their parents or their mothers who are oppressed. It's not a holiday for everyone. And um, so if you're going to celebrate, which you should and you must, it's obligatory to celebrate. Celebrate the consciousness that not everyone can celebrate and see if you can uh, make a contribution in whatever way is is, uh, meaningful to you to help others and to give, give them at least a, a taste of your own joy and your own uh, innocence and uh, humility. And that can manifest in so many ways um, uh, charitably and go out on the street and find someone who is cold or hungry and make a change in their life. Uh, find an orphaned dog or cat or cow or pig or uh, squirrel or pigeon and make a difference in their life. Um, So you can fit all sizes in your heart as sort of like a packed bus at five o'clock on Upper Fifth Avenue in New York City. Everybody's together. Everyone, as Walt Whitman said, um, feels the sweat of armpits and gets along regardless. So Make this world what your ideal of the world would be and do it for another individual um, face to face, look into their eyes and, 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 and do it on an equal footing. So you're not in any way humiliating that individual. And that includes pigeons as well as children. I, I speak of all life forms because believe me, they, they are completely attuned to what you're feeling. A, a, a black bear can smell metal 18 miles away. So that tells you how confusing the world is to, that we've created to other species. So um, this is a holiday that is like no other holiday in human history because we're at a pivotal point, like no other period in our short history. Um, 330,000 years young, that's what we are. So remember what you did as a child. Remember Dr. Doolittle, remember Bambi, remember Heidi, remember uh, Lassie. These are These are important memories to guide you in the holiday season and make the best of it.
So God bless. Yeah. Bye. Gary Jacobs. I guess my my message to the world is we are at points of uh, humanity is facing unprecedented challenges. But I have the deepest conviction that those unprecedented challenges are really unprecedented opportunities. In fact, the pre we need this pressure. We need the pressure of these challenges to really make the transition, the inevitable natural transition uh, that we need to make in any case. Uh, and uh, I'd almost say, I think, if, if we didn't have, if we didn't suffer from COVID-19 pandemic or climate change, we would need to create them because we need the pressure of these challenges that unite us rather than the challenges that divide us. Uh, today, this is the first time in history the world is closer together. We are more related to each other, more interconnected than any time in history. We've never been this related to one another as human beings on a global scale. But we're still mired down by ways of thinking and traditions and institutions and organizations and laws and practices that are uh, based on a period in which we're all separate and even competing and suspecting one another and defending ourselves from one another. And now, you know, the famous Hollywood movies uh, are all about the invasions from outer space. It's the only thing that ever united humanity. <laughs> is when the whole planet is under uh, siege from an enemy. Then we throw away our animosities and we recognize our unity. I think that's what we've got now. We've got uh, the challenges. We must come together as human beings. We can come. We are coming, just not fast enough. And so the pressure keeps rising. We need to feel much more our humanity than we do our nationality or our religious differences, or our ethnic differences, or our linguistic differences. And that's happening, but it's happening too slowly uh, for our patience and for the, the pace of change that's going on. So I think we, are, we have the possibility of a really great transition now, where we overcome the barriers and we really come to act, think, act, and feel as humanity as a whole. And my hope is for the younger generation, because I think they're much more connected. They're much more holistic. <laughs> they're much more human in that sense than we who have come earlier and, and learned of our differences and learned to take those differences for reality. Jude Curavan. Hello, everyone. We're at a time that we call the holiday season. And holidays hundreds of years ago were known as holy days. They were times when we actually slowed down and took a breath and were really there to support us in feeling a sense of community, a sense of togetherness, a sense of gratitude for all that we have in life, however little that might be. And so I encourage everyone to really perhaps remember that ancient sense of what holidays are about, their holy days. And if you add an L into holy, you get holy, <laughs> you get a sense of wholeness. So I invite you to take a breath. Really ask yourself what really matters to me at this time. And I sense the answer may come that it's friends and family and peace and love and to be grateful for those. So this is my invitation to you and this is my hope and my prayer for you at this special time of the year that actually we can expand to be the whole year. And now a few words from our co-hosts. First, Irvin Laszlo, and then Fred Sow. The holiday into which we're entering now 
is a celebration of peace and love. There is hardly anything that we need as much on this earth than peace and love. With love, we can solve our problems. If we love each other, then we love life. If we love life, we love all things around us. So we have to take this seriously. Take a moment, take a deep breath. Stop for a moment this chatter and say, this is our chance. We have reached a critical point in our existence. Now we take a moment. We stop this, the earth for a moment and say, where are we going? Why are we here? For love, for peace. We can create it and then we will not only live on this earth, but thrive on this earth. This, I think, was the message of Jesus Christ, is the message of all great prophets, is the message of great scientists and philosophers. Let's be that message ourselves, as Gandhi said. We should incorporate peace and love, then there will be peace and love on earth. Well, hi, everybody. Christmas is coming up. I know Christmas is a uh, holy uh, time for Christians. But of course, we all sweep away by the Santa Claus from uh, Coca-Cola and all the commercialization, uh, drinking, celebration. It's great to connect. But I remember there's something in the Bible that says, in stillness you will find me and I will heal you. Now, we need a lot of healing nowadays, for sure, not only ourselves, but our family. So to celebrate this holy day, perhaps we can think of a new way of celebrating in stillness together and feeling the connection of the energy and with God and the healing we need ourselves. Because in fact, we need it. So, drink the Holy Spirit instead of the other Holy Spirit that you do normally during Christmas and connect together by connecting in the self because in that in the self will find a true collective consciousness and oneness that you would not know that you will feel. So have a good holiday. And finally, a contemplation on the holidays from Marianne Williamson. Both Hanukkah and Christmas are festivals of light. In Hanukkah, in that religious story, the Jews celebrate the fact that candles burned for eight days and night, which theoretically transcended the laws of time and space, thus delivering the Jews from their, uh, the danger and the destructiveness of their enemies. Of course, the idea of Christmas is the idea that God's power descends into the human heart and casts out the darkness of the demonic forces that exist there. So both, both stories, both religious holidays tell the same tale, and that is that the power of God is a light that transcends and transforms the darkness of the world. Now, if we see these things as just symbols, if we see them as just stories, if we see them as just like children's toys, then that is the power that they will have in our lives. But if we allow ourselves to go deeper, to eschew the consumerist, materialist externalities of the holiday season, and really truly allow our hearts to take in at the deepest level the meaning of the great religious stories such as this holiday season reveals, then something changes within us. And we realize that God's power to deliver us is as true for us now as it was true for people thousands of years ago. And that the light of the Christ, by whatever name we call it, that exists within us, uplifts us to a point where we too transcend all of the darkness, all of the pain, all of the suffering, and all of the limitations of the world. When we sing the Christmas uh, carol, long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Is the world not now 
Long lay the world in sin and error pining. What do you call environmental degradation if not sin and error? And what do you call the horror of people facing this degradation if not humanity pining? There are so many things right now from pandemics to inequality to racism to, to all manner of horror that makes us in our time examples of the world long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared till he appeared by whatever name we call him she it whatever it is and the soul felt its worth the soul feels we don't need to do this we are bigger than this this is meant the conditions of the world are meant to be our servant we are not meant to be servants to the limitations of the world and if in this season while so many billions of people billions of people are considering the possibility that we might be more. That is the meaning of this season. And as all of us share with each other, the idea that we can consider the possibility there might be another way. There might be a light in the human heart that will change all this, that there can be rebirth, that there can be new possibility. Given that, there is still despite everything else, a reason to praise God, a reason to say hallelujah, a reason to have hope and a reason to commit this year to living these stories in our own lives. Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us. Dawn of an Era of Well-Being is a co-production of the Laszlo Institute, IT Institute, and Select Books. It's produced by Nora Cesar and Kenichi Sugihara with theme music Chimera by Biba DuPont. The book, Dawn of an Era of Well-Being, co-authored by Irvin Laszlo and Frederick Sau, is available wherever books or e-books are sold. Please subscribe to Dawn of an Era of Well-Being, the podcast, on Apple or Spotify for more fascinating guests and discussion. My name is Alison Goldwyn, founder and creative director of Synchronistory.com, a future party for the planet broadcast live worldwide. Wishing you well-being till we talk again next week.